Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to be talking about a very significant national development that has taken place. So the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India's youngest deputy governor, Viral Acharya has put in his papers. And what could it actually mean? Everywhere the media is talking about why he has resigned. We are going to be talking about that and a lot more with senior journalist Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. Paranjoy, first things first, he was always a non-confirmist. So why did he actually resign now and uh, did he get on the wrong side of the government? Well, we can only speculate about why he's put in his papers yeah. six months before his term was to end, which was in February to 2020. Yeah. Now, it's a fact that he's been the youngest Govern, Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. He's 45 years old. He's got a wife and an 11-year-old son in New York. He, he's going back to his alma mater. He studied at New York University's Stern School of Business. He was professor of economics there. This is after he left uh, the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. Yeah. Now, why did it happen? Now, some of his differences with the government are in the public domain. Yes. What are these? He had been appointed by the former governor, that's Urjit Patel. Urjit Patel put in his papers, he resigned yeah. on the 10th of December, the day before the uh, assembly election results for Madhya Pradesh and, and Rajasthan yeah. and Chhattisgarh were declared. And he was soon thereafter succeeded by Shakti Kanta Das. Uh, now, what had happened is, let's look at what these differences were. The first evidence that Viral Acharya, as well as Dr. Urjit Patel, yeah. his mentor, weren't exactly seeing eye to eye with the government of the day, was when Viral Acharya gave a public speech. Yes. This was in October of 2018. It was the A.D. Shroff Memorial Lecture. Let me quote a few lines yes. from it. What he said that governments that do not respect central bank independence will sooner or later incur the wrath of financial markets, ignite economic fire, and come to rue the day they undermined an important regulatory institution. That the government wasn't happy was very, very evident uh, soon yes. thereafter. Why? Mr. Subhash Garg who was Secretary of Economic Affairs in the Ministry of Finance, he tweeted. He said the rupee is trading at below 73 to a dollar. Brent crude oil prices are below 73. Yeah. The markets have gone up by 4%. The bond deals are below 8%. Uh, Wrath of the markets? Question mark. Mm. So there was clearly Very a evident. This, yes. But more than that, I mean, the fact that Viral Acharya was a non-conformist was known. It's not just that he often didn't have to, when there was no formal meeting, he didn't, he didn't wear yeah. a, a suit and a tie uh, in, in Mumbai's heat, you know, 40 degrees. He, he didn't even live in the fancy bungalow in Mumbai's Napian Sea Road, which was allotted to a deputy governor, uh, and he instead he chose to remain with his family uh, in Ville Parle. And he was supposed to be one of those guys, informal person. He would, when with his 11 year old son, he would go and play soccer with the neighborhood children. But no, on a most serious note, I mean, there were some major differences of opinion. Yeah. What were these? Firstly, we know, and let's go step by step, let's mm -hmm. go backwards in a sense. There was a Monetary Policy Committee meeting on the 6th of June. Yes. In the minutes which became available about two weeks later on the 20th of June, it has been recorded that Viral Acharya had highlighted what he described as the upside risks yeah. to the Reserve Bank of India's projections on inflation and he apprehended there would be a fiscal slippage. Now, why? He said that, look, you can't take the fiscal deficit the way the government does. You must include in it public sector borrowing requirements. Yeah. He, he said there could be a 0.5% slippage in the fiscal deficit. He said there could be a 10% increase in oil prices, all of which would actually result in the Reserve Bank of India's calculations going all right. That's not all. It is believed that he was one of the strong defenders of the prompt corrective action 
that was proposed on weak banks, mm -hmm. including restraining them from loaning, advancing fresh loans. And I, I think the Reserve Bank of India's dissension on a government committee uh, on this issue of payments and settlement laws and rules were also evidence. So on all these issues, there was tension between the central bank and Apex Monetary Authority and the Ministry of Finance. Now, once again, you can say there's nothing new. There should be some yeah. tension in it, but there's more than that. Yeah, there are some ideological... I'll come to the yeah. ideology a little later. You know, th remember this was the time that the government of India actually threatened to use Section 7 of the Reserve Bank of India. Yes. It has never been used, which actually empowered the board to direct the affairs of the central bank. This has come at a time when the Bimal Jalan committee has sought more time to present its report. It was supposed to submit its report in April. It sought more time on how the surplus funds of the Reserve Bank of India are to be transferred to the government. Now, it is believed that uh, Mr. Charya was not exactly in favor of, as they say, Mm. Allowing North Bloc to raid the Treasury. I'm using this within yes. inverted commas. But from the time Urjit Patel suddenly resigned as the governor of the Reserve Bank of India, I think the writing on the wall was clear. Yeah. That his protege, in a sense, and the person who he was responsible for uh, bringing to the Reserve Bank of India would soon be leaving very few people were surprised, you know. Yes. Uh, so uh, he, he was appointed in December 2016 and he chose to quit. Yeah, and this is coming, term. this is not new, like you said. So this is, we've seen a slew of resignations after resignations from Urijit Patel to Raghuram Rajan, and there are a lot more, lot, lot more. many names. In, in fact, uh, a number of independent economists who were recruited to prominent positions with this, uh, by this government, by the Modi government now in its second term. Uh, and, and mind you, they were all ideologically inclined towards yeah. the ruling party. Yes. I, mean, I mean, it's not as if they were left of center. They were right wing in their, in their views. You can call them neoliberal. I mean, you can use any description as you like. One of them, let's name some of them. Yes. The vice chairman of the Niti Ayo, which replaced the planning commission, Arvind Panagaria. He was one person who lived, as you mentioned, two Reserve Bank of India governors, Dr. Ujit Patel, Dr. Raghuram Rajan, economic advisor, yeah. Arvind Subramaniam, who's got into a controversy with his recent paper about GDP growth yeah. numbers. Now, he too quit ahead of the, his term. So, in a sense, you can argue that many, many uh, independent economists, even if they've been ideologically inclined towards the government, yes. uh, has not been comfortable because I, I, maybe they felt stifled. I'll give you one other reason. Yeah. Swaminathan Gurumurthy, a chartered accountant from Chennai, was appointed on the Reserve Bank of India's board on the 8th of August, 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gurumurthy ji is an idologue of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. Yes. He's a moving force behind the Swadeshi Jagran Manch. And though he's ostensibly a quote-unquote part-time and a non-official governor of the Reserve Bank mm -hmm. of India, many felt that uh, he ex exerted a lot of influence and sought to, you know, guide the manner in which uh, the Reserve Bank of India uh, going. You know, Tamal Bandopadhyay, who broke the story on uh, business standard, he said that the meetings of the board of the Reserve Bank of India became longer and more acrimonious than before. Mm -hmm. And so clearly there was tension and I don't think anybody can deny that. Whether that tension is, was inevitable, good, is another matter altogether. So now how do you see the repercussions of this tensions in terms of uh, the impact on the political implications of it and the economic implications of this? Look, uh, this government wants people who toe the line. Yeah. They, they don't want people who are independent. There have been former bureaucrats who, uh, once they sat on that position, it's a yeah. cons it became the head of that constitutional authority. They displayed a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, independence and autonomy. The, the differences of opinion that Dr. Y. Venugopal Reddy yeah. had with the Ministry of Finance, with Mr. Chidambaram. The, the differences that... Uh, Mr. Duvuri Subarao had with Mr. Chidambaram are all recorded, are, are very, very well known. Yeah. But I think this government is uh, doesn't brook dissent at all. Uh, 
my <laughs> batchmate Shaktikant Das, who has a master's degree in history, uh, was always uh, perceived to be not just uh, a loyal and a compliant bureaucrat, he was in fact the face of the government of India in the most controversial decision yes. of its kind of December 2016, demonetization. And many, many, uh, uh, much later we know that there was no unanimity within the Reserve Bank of India board, the hurriedly convened board meeting to sort of, uh, to approve the government's decision. Though, of course, Dr. Ujit Patel went along with the government. So uh, I think this particular government is very keen that <laughs> that uh, the Reserve Bank of India, in fact, all institutions um, pl are pliant to the government's line. Talking about compliance to the government line, who do you see? There are uh, multiple names cropping up as the next successor or perhaps a compliant successor to uh, Viral Acharya. Well, who do you see? Again, I can only quote. My friend Tamal Bandupada, who broke the story yeah. in Business Standard, he's mentioned two names, Sanjeev yeah. Sanyal, Principal Economic Advisor in the Ministry of Finance, and uh, Michael Patra, who is the Executive Director of the RBI, and he's also a member of the Monetary Policy Committee. So we have to wait and watch what happens. Uh, I really wouldn't guess. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't venture a guess as to who is going to replace him as yeah. Deputy Governor. But uh, to go by that same report of Tamal, uh, he says that another deputy governor whose term ends in early July, uh, Mr. N. Vishwanathan, he's likely to get an extension of his term. All right. So on that note, we will be following the story. It's a very interesting development that has taken place. And on NewsClick, we'd be following uh, as to who becomes the next deputy governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.